Checklists are always one of the most popular lead magnets with any audience. So in this video, I'll show you how you can create your own. Let's do it. All right, so you probably already know what a checklist is, but just to be sure, it's essentially a series of actionable tasks that people can use to achieve a specific goal. Checklists help to make large, complicated tasks seem easier and more achievable. And they also give people an obvious way to take action. So it's great for helping to get people started. Now in this sample checklist, it provides people with a series of tests that they can carry out when assessing a used car. Now an insurance company might offer this lead magnet to people who are in the market for a used car. It consists of a cover page, a short introduction, two pages of practical tasks to be completed and a call to action at the end. You can find the link to this checklist in the description below the video. All right, so now we know what a checklist is. Let's go ahead and recreate this example in Beacon. All right, so as always, we're going to start this project on the Beacon dashboard. We're going to go to the yellow button and select create new lead magnet. The format that we're going to be creating today is obviously a checklist. So I'm going to select that. We're not going to import any content. Um, and when it comes to choosing a theme, and um, we're going to look for one that sort of is slightly close to, to our purposes. Now, the checklist that we're making is all about used cars. It's about helping people to do some checks on a used car before they purchase it. Um, so I can't really see any uh, templates here that are related to cars. So we're going to find one that's kind of close to what we need and then just customize it to suit our purposes. Um, so, for example, this template has like a, it's got a big background image. It's got this like orange banner that you know makes the text in it very readable. So let's just pick this one and we'll customize it uh, to suit our needs. We'll just give this lead magnet a title um, so we can find it later. Used car checklist. So as always, Beacon sort of pulls the document together. You can see on the left hand side that we've got four different pages within this document. And if we use, let me zoom out actually, if we use the arrows up here in the top right hand corner, we can see all the pages included in the lead magnet. So we've got the cover page, we've got a short introduction, we've got the actual checklist items, uh, and then we've got a call to action at the end. Um, now the problem with this particular lead magnet is that it's got nothing to do with cars, like it's got like generic sort of business type images throughout it. Um, so we're going to go through each of these pages and customize them to suit our target audience, which is people shopping for cars. So let's go back to the cover page and make a start. So the biggest way that you can make an impact, uh, an impactful change to the design of your lead magnet is to change the cover page image. And it's really easy to do. So you go to the cover page, then you go to the third option on the left hand side, which is page settings. So you click that, you can see that this thumbnail has the existing cover image in it. So if we click that, we can change it. So I'm going to click it. I'm going to upload a new image and I have that saved on my computer. So I'm just going to double click that. And already we can see that this document is looking a little bit more like it has something to do with cars. So we're not finished yet, but you know, it's a good start. Um, so next I want to, um, I want to customize the text. So like document title is no good. Let's replace that with our own document title. Um, so it's called it essential so you can see that we've added the headline um, to the cover page but it's all squashed over to this one side uh, and there's a lot of empty space here so really we want that title to just expand you know the full width of the page um, so one way I can do that is, um, let me zoom in. So see when I hover over these elements, you can see that this blue dotted line appears. It's because there's a column here within this strip and this column contains the logo and this column on the other side, on the left hand side, contains the text. Uh, for our purposes, um, we don't really need to have the logo here. We're going to put it towards the bottom of the page. So let's just delete this column. So we do that by clicking on the column, uh, going over to the blue menu and then clicking the delete button. 
So you can see now that our text sort of goes the full width of the page. Um, we have room to put a company name below the title, but I like to use that for a little bit of like qualifying information just to make the, the checklist a bit more enticing. Um, so I'm going to just add in Don't buy a used car without this checklist. So basically when people like see the cover page of this checklist, I want them to think, you know, that's something that I need to download. And so the, the image and the text that you use on the cover page are really important. Um, so let me zoom out and see how that's all looking. So, okay, it's looking pretty good. Uh, this text is a little small, the qualifying text. So let's just click on that and use the blue menu just to bump that up a little bit to say 25. That's starting to look pretty good now. So I'm going to close this blue menu. I'm going to save our changes. Um, next, I want to add our logo to the cover page. Now we can put this pretty much anywhere, um, but I think for this image, you can see like there's sort of a nice gap down here at the corner, which seems like it's tailor-made for a logo. So let's add one to the page. We're going to go across to the drag and drop menu, which is the second item on the left-hand side. And we're going to drag an image onto the page. And so, as you can see, this is the image placeholder. And it's just where we, we dragged it onto the page. But let's change that to be our logo. So we're going to click the placeholder, use the blue menu to change the image. And we're going to upload our own logo from our computer. So that's, that's a big logo. That's far too big. So let's use the blue menu just to reduce the size of that logo down to this. And um, we want it to be on the right hand side of the screen. So let's just change the alignment to right. I'm going to close the blue menu. And we want this um, image, this logo to be at the bottom of the page in this corner. So what I like to do in this situation is just to use a spacer and just drag it onto the page, put it in between um, the strip and the image, release. And once you, when you roll over a spacer, you know, you have this striped blue area. So when you click on that, you can then increase the height of the spacer. And basically that serves to just push everything down or push pull everything up the page. So the height of the spacer means that you can push and pull content up and down the page. So it's a nice little trick. And you'll see that I'm trying to put the image right to the bottom of the page. But if I keep increasing this spacer, it's still leaving this little gap at the bottom of the page. And that's because the page itself has some page margin set on it. So let's just take off that bottom page margin. I'm going to close the blue menu. I'm going to go into page settings. And at the bottom of this menu, in the margin section, I'm going to set the bottom margin to zero. As you can see now, there's no um, margin at the bottom of the page. So our logo can sit right at the bottom of the page. And that's looking pretty good, you know, like in just a couple of minutes, we've gone from a generic sort of businessy template to one that's definitely, you know, branded for our company. It's got our logo, it's got our color scheme, and we've got a nice striking background image that's likely to appeal to our target reader for this lead magnet. So that's the cover page. Let's move on to the next page, which is it's the introduction. So I've mentioned this in previous videos, but I think that every um, lead magnet should have an introduction section in it. So the introduction really is your chance to convince the reader that the content included in the lead magnet is high quality content, that it's worth their time reading it, and that you know, you're an expert in your industry so that they should trust your content. So it's a, a lot of responsibility for you to get this across in just one page. So I think an introduction is a great way to set the scene, add a little bit of context to the lead magnet and really to show your expertise. So let's add some content here. OK, so that is the introduction for our checklist lead magnet. Um, if you read the text and you can if you, actually if you click the link uh, below this video, you'll be able to see this completed lead magnet. So if you click that link and read this introduction, you'll see that it's um, this checklist has been made by an insurance company and they're trying to reassure readers that they know what they're talking about. You know, they've been in business for 50 years. They know cars. They know what to look out for when buying a used car. So they're setting the scene um, they're like establishing their expertise and they're helping the reader to trust them. 
So that's the introduction pretty much done. Let's move on to the next page. Okay, so this is probably the most important page in the checklist. Like this is gonna contain the actual checklist items. So these are the eight steps that people should perform when, um, when buying a used car. So there's quite a lot of information for us to, to get across. Uh, and I'm just looking at this page and I'm not sure it's the right format for us. Um, so if you look at this box, it has you know a list of like 10 checklist items. And this particular format would be good if like we had nice short checklist items. And like, fair enough, we've only got eight of them, but for each checklist item, I wanna have a little bit more information about like, you know, what checks to perform. Like it's no good just saying you should check the tires. I wanna have a bit more information saying like, how do you check the tires? So this format doesn't really work for us completely. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make a few adjustments and they're really easy to do. Uh, and hopefully that'll help to show you how you can make similar adjustments when you're creating your own checklist lead magnets. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this headline. You know, we've got a cover page that, um, that has the title of the checklist. So let's just click on that, use the blue menu to delete it. And the same thing with this small paragraph, like we have a dedicated introduction page. I don't think we really need to repeat ourselves here. So we're gonna click on it. We're gonna use the blue menu and we're gonna delete it. That leaves us, you know, this list of 10 checklist items. So I'm gonna delete the, the last nine. So that leaves us with just one. And then I'm gonna rename this checklist item to something like tires. Um, and let me zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. So as I said before, it's no good just saying to people that you should check tires on a used car before you buy it. Like we need to tell them what to do. So let's close this blue menu and we're gonna to go to the drag and drop menu, which is the second option on the left-hand side. And we're gonna drag in some more text. So I'm just gonna drop this in the box beneath tires. And we're gonna use this paragraph to explain you know, what people should be doing. Um, so I'm gonna, before we add the text, let's just change it to a white color. So I'm gonna click the text, use the blue menu to change the text color to white. And now I'm gonna uh, actually go ahead and edit this text. All right, so that's our first checklist item. Uh, it's tires. We have a, a statement explaining how people should check the tires, but it's still not quite right. Um, I'd like to make this uh, more of a headline. So I wanna make the actual tires, the checklist item a little bit bigger. So when I click on it, I can see from the blue menu that this is currently um, 18 pixel font size. So I'm gonna bump that up just to 30. Oh, not 300, but 30. Um, so that's, um, it's a little bit bigger. So when people are like glancing down the checklist, they can get the main items so they can remember in their head, like, oh, I need to check the tires. I need to check the windshield, things like that. Um, so this is starting to look pretty good. Um, the one thing I would say is that the, the actual box itself is a little bit narrow. You know, we've got a lot of wasted space at either side. Um, so let's make that, uh, this orange box a little bit bigger. So the way to do that is um, to reduce the page margins. So we're gonna go into the page settings, which is again, the third option down on the left-hand side. We're gonna go down to margins and we're gonna reduce the left and right margins to 100 each. You can see now that the, you know, the box is a little bit bigger, the text is a little bit more readable. Um, so we're looking good at the minute. Let me just uh, click save. So now we've got one checklist item, but we need another seven. Um, so I don't really want to have to do a lot of work because you know we're gonna use the same format for each one. So I'm just gonna duplicate this box that I've already got. So I'm gonna click on the box and in the blue menu, I'm gonna to go to the bottom. I'm gonna click duplicate. So again, I'm gonna click in the orange box in the blue menu. I'm gonna select duplicate. Let me scroll down and try it one more time. Click on the orange box, go down to the blue menu and select duplicate. So now if I zoom out, you can see that we've got you know four good items, four good checklist items on the page. We don't really have room for, um, you know, we have another four to add. They're not gonna all fit on this page, um, but we'll worry about that later. For now, I'm just gonna make some quick customizations to the text on this page, um, just for the, to add the different checklist items. So the first one was tires. The second one is gonna be glass. 
And the final one is service history. Um, so if I close this blue menu, you can really see that this is um, it's starting to take shape. So this is a good checklist with four items on it. Now we have another four to do. They're not gonna fit on this one page. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this page and then just edit the text. Um, so I'm, first I'm gonna save my progress. I'm gonna to go to the pages tab. I'm gonna find the checklist page, which the page that we're currently on is yellow. So if I go over to the side menu and click duplicate, we now have a, an exact replica of our original page that's been added to the end of the document. So I'm actually, I'm gonna move that up just so it's below the other items. So I'm just gonna drag and drop that um, duplicated page up below the original page. And then I can start making some changes to our duplicate. So the fifth checklist item is gonna be, um, I think it's accessories. And the final option then is engine screws. Um, so we can go through and sort of add, you know, the descriptive paragraph for each one, but you know, you get the idea. You can just go in and, and add those yourself. Um, so I'm gonna close this blue menu and go on, gonna click save. And then um, I'm just gonna do a quick preview of this document to see where we're at. So using the preview link at the top menu, we can see that, okay, this is the cover page. We've got our title, um, nice big background image. We've got our logo at the bottom. We've got the introduction, which is looking good. And then we have our checklist items. So that's one, two, three, four. And on a new page, we have five, six, seven, and eight. So that's perfect. Um, yes, so the final page that we need to edit now is the call to action page. So let me just zoom out here. So this call to action page is it's just a bit generic. Again, it's not really anything to do with the car industry. So let's go back into the Beacon Editor and uh, customize this page. So with the Pages tab open, I'm gonna select the last page, which is the Call to Action page. Um, let me think, so we have our logo already. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete this logo um, and I'm gonna add ours to the top of the page instead. So again, I'm going to the drag and drop menu, um, clicking and dragging the image card onto the top of the page, releasing. Then I'm gonna click this image placeholder. I'm gonna use the blue menu to upload our own um, logo image. And again, that's far too big, so let's reduce the size of that down. Um, we want this to be centrally aligned. Um, and it's starting to look good, but yeah, again, the background image, like it sets the tone for the whole page. And this background image just has nothing to do with cars. So let's sort that out. Um, I'm gonna to go to page settings. I can see the thumbnail for the existing background image here. So I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna change it by uploading our own image. Nice, okay, so we have our logo at the top. We've got a nice uh, background image of like an open road. So that's perfect for, for people who are shopping for a new car. You know, they'll want to, to picture themselves driving the new car on the open road. Um, actually, the placement of this strip is a bit awkward. Um, I think if we move that to the bottom, we could see, you know, the horizon of the road. So that would be a bit better. So there's a spacer here um, just underneath our logo. So I'm gonna click on the spacer and I'm gonna use the blue menu just to push the, um, that orange strip all the way to the bottom. Um, and again, you can see that I can't quite get that to the bottom, and that's because there is page margins there. So I'm gonna close the blue menu, go into page settings, go down to margins, and I'm gonna reduce the bottom page margin to zero. That gets it to the bottom. And actually, now that we're here, um, it would look better if that our, if our logo was just sitting right at the top of the page. So let's reduce the top page margin to zero as well. Perfect. All right, so I mentioned previously in the video that this checklist was gonna be produced by um, a car insurance company. And the car insurance company wanted to put together this piece of content specifically for used car shoppers, because they know that people who buy used cars 
are more likely to buy insurance products that come bundled with, um, say, free breakdown cover. So that's what we're going to make the call to action for this lead magnet. We're going to say, like, now that we've given you this great information for how people can uh, uh, check a used car before they buy it, here's some insurance that completely covers your needs. Um, and so that's what we're going to use the call to action to promote. So I'm going to change the text now. So you can see now from this page that um, we're doing a good job of like explaining what the offer is, like what we're offering people, which is, you know, insurance with breakdown cover is standard. But now we need to lead people to like where they can purchase or where they can get a quote for their insurance. And we'll do that with the button. So we're going to click the button. We're going to use the blue menu at the left hand side to customize the button text. Um, so I'll change that to like get your free quote today or not a free quote quotes are always free let's say get your uh instant quote today it's a more compelling uh call to action for the reader and then all that's left to do is really to replace this dummy um this dummy link with one uh, to your own website so i can't remember let's say like coverinsurance.com slash free quote so that's it we're going to close the blue menu, click save, and then if we go to preview the document again, you can see that it's looking really great. Like we've got a, a brilliant cover page with a striking image and really clear text. We've got our own brand incorporated through the logo. We've got an introduction that shows our expertise uh, and helps the readers to trust us. We've got the essential items that people should carry out um, before they buy a new car. So these are all checks with, you know, a little bit more of a description about how people can do it. You know, this is valuable content that most people wouldn't know and understand, but you're using your expertise to teach it to them so they can apply it in their own situation. And then finally, we've got this, you know, stunning call to action with the open road in the background. We're reassuring people that our company offers free breakdown cover as standard because we know that the people reading this checklist are going to be more interested in buying used cars. So they're going to be more interested in buying a breakdown cover as part of their insurance package. So that's it. A checklist is one of the most popular lead magnet formats out there because it's so practical. You're really helping your readers out and they'll appreciate it because of that. Thanks now.